President, uh, for the opening of this conference on how internal This is part of a, a several process meeting, series of meetings, the first of which happened in Zambia at the end of March, when we focused our activities on uh, the, uh, what was then, then the immediate events of the impact of Afghanistan on the way in which external powers went about uh, their business in terms of providing external assistance. Of course, Things have happened since then, most notably the war in Ukraine, uh, which have con uh, seriously challenged some of those assumptions. And what do we know really from more recent experience? And my colleague and collaborator Dave Kilcullen is going to briefly in a moment elaborate on some of these aspects. I think we know for certain that there needs to be a methodology for peace, a methodology for peace that was ignored largely in the case of Afghanistan, what Lakta Brahimi called the original sin about not having a political peace uh, established in that country. And we do know that the peace methodology has to include internal factors, the party, the conflicting parties have to want peace more than they want peace more than they, they want to continue fighting. The external parties need to be pushing those parties to the negotiating table and of course that was notably absent in the case of Afghanistan and then you need leadership, you need timing and methodology and one of the reasons Mr. President why we thought it so apt to be in Somaliland for this event is because of the way in which Somaliland has built its peace from the ground up, an organic process led by Somalis, um, led by uh, a domestically driven process, not led by uh, external actors in any shape or form. I do think the second aspect that we uh, stressed at the event uh, in Zambia, and that will no doubt again surface over the course of uh, today and tomorrow's conversations, is this issue of local ownership. How do locals take ownership and how do external actors, how should ex external actors best reinforce the success and actions of locals is a crucial question and Dave Kilcullen is going to pick up on this in a moment. And then the third and very important and timely factor that we looked at and it's even more pressing today with the impact of the war in Ukraine is how uh, internal actors have to mitigate the external and internal challenges faced by Africa. And these we elaborated during the session in Zambia essentially fall into a number of different categories. The first of these is the donor diversion of interest away from Africa towards Europe in, as a consequence of Ukraine, but a general fatigue on the part of external actors to support uh, uh, African initiatives that re result in only limited success. The second big driver of change is that of demography. We all know about the consequences and the likely outcomes of demographic shifts in Africa, but the way in which Africans plan for these, the way in which we mitigate these challenges is going to be crucial in turning this from a potential disaster to a dividend. The third big issue is low growth. Uh, or you could call it, if you were searching for another D, development. And Africa has not had the sort of growth rates um, that we uh, would like to see and that, we dem that are demanded by this level of demographic change. Uh, day before yesterday, Mr. President, uh, we went down to the port of Berbera uh, and saw the tremendous changes that have happened in Berbera uh, over the last several years. Um, incredible changes in converting or changing that port through private ownership or private concessioning uh, from a 100,000 a year container port to a 500,000 a uh, year container port and then ultimately in four years time to a 2 million a year container port uh, and the arterial road that links Berber of course with Hargesa 
is a key part of that as well. That is going to help to drive growth, but that growth is also going to have to be underpinned by the nature of regional relationships and partnerships, which Africa has been very good at talking about, but much less proficient in enacting uh, and turning into functional realities. And I look at some of my colleagues in southern Africa and some of the challenges we have in the difference between summits and actual events and improvements on the ground which continue to bedevil our policy initiatives. The fourth aspect is that of debt and Africa's going into a relatively high debt situation with increasing interest rates it's going to make it much more difficult for Africans to borrow cheaply to finance development and that's certainly going to pr prove along with inflationary impact, impacts uh, to, to have a, a negative effect uh, for the foreseeable future and certainly by the end of this year we're going to be looking at interest rates uh, in, the, in the Fed north of 2.5% and that's going to have a very big effect on small relatively illiquid African markets. Another is climate change. I was speaking to your um, the Secretary General of your Department of Foreign Affairs a moment ago outside and we were talking to your Deputy Foreign Minister about uh, uh, the concerns about yet another drought. I know you had rains last night here, uh, but this is now an increasing reality which compounded by high levels of uh, or high rates of demographic change is something uh, that Africa is going to have to manage better than hitherto. And then the last big challenge that we need to talk about and which um, Somaliland has been a standout exception in this regard is the relative democratic recession that we have across the continent. The number of democracies have reduced, uh, democratic conditions have tightened in many instances uh, and the way in which outside actors support those democracies is a matter of some concern. I'm looking at my friend and colleague Bobby Wine, who has that great line, don't fund our oppressor. If you're going to do anything to help us, just don't fund conditions that effectively tighten the democratic space uh, rather than do anything at all. Um, but we need to think about how external actors better calibrate their assistance, reinforce the success of those that have embarked on this democratic path and who are trying to keep it going, sometimes against the odds. It's Somaliland's strongest advantage, Mr. President, its strongest uh, card to play in the international community um, uh, and it's one that certainly should be rewarded by levels of assistance. Before I hand over to Dave Kilcullen, let me do two things, Mr. President, is to thank you sincerely, not only for being here, but for the hospitality that we have been accorded over the last several days. Uh, Somaliland is perhaps more famous for its democracy, but it should be very famous for its hospitality. There's been no request too large. There's been no request too large or onerous uh, for your staff to carry out for us, and particularly to Mohammed and his team of, of willing helpers. Thank you very much.